Hi guys, we got a 2011 F-150 here. It's a five liter engine. Uh, we got a couple lights on the dash. We got the brake light, we got the ABS light, and then we're, that's what we're tasked with dealing with. Customer wants to know why they're on there. Can we remove them? Is it easy enough to do? What's involved? So the first step, hook up the scan tool, check for codes, and there's a bunch of codes in there in lots of the modules, and the, uh, the gist of it is nobody can talk to the ABS module. So sure enough, when I try to go to it, get the old no communication. Can't talk to the ABS module. So where do we go from here? Well, I always go to the uh, wiring diagrams. I'll look at a couple. Um, I'll look at the, the wiring diagram for the ABS module. As well, I'll look up the, um, especially for no comm, the information bus. What I kind of want to look at for the information bus. Is this a bus network or is it a daisy chain network? Okay, so when I was filming this, I don't think I did a good enough job uh, explaining what I mean by bus and what I mean by daisy chain and, and why I think that thought process of going after a no comm kind of issue. Um, there's basically the two different types or you can treat it as the two different types. There are more types, but you can just, for simplicity, you can treat it as two different types. You have a bus topology, which a lot of systems are, a lot of CAN bus systems are, not all of them, where basically you have a centralized bus and all the modules, including the data link connector, are connected to those centralized wires. So what that means is everybody is connected directly to that data link connector by a shared line. So if one module goes down, it only affects the one module. That's it. But in a daisy chain, what you have to make it easier, um, I guess, uh, you have one module that's just connected to another module, which then is connected to another module and so on, so on, so on to the data link connector. So what that means is each module is responded, responsible for passing on not only its messages, but all the messages of the other nodes so that they all can get back to the DLC and everyone else involved. Whereas on a bus, you know, each module, all it has to do is just dump its messages out on the bus and just listen for the messages that are relevant to it. That's it. But on a daisy chain, each module is its own gateway module. So on a daisy chain kind of setup, what that means is you could have a bad module and that, could, that would take out all the other modules uh, before it. And this happens. So um, it only takes a quick second to look at the information bus diagram. And on this particular case, if we follow the wires, we can see that each module connects to centralized wires, centralized splices that then go to the data link connector. Uh, some diagrams you see kind of a combination of the two. You might have a few modules, you know, down the way off to the side that one module is connected to the next, which is connected to the next, which then goes to a bus. And if that's the case, then, you know, you could have the last module could be dead and maybe it's actually a cause of something else. This is why I do a quick look of that. Since I don't see that on this vehicle, um, you know, basically all I do is I, I look at the information bus, I look for the module in question, and I look, does it have a direct connection to the data link connector, or does it have to go through anybody else before it gets to the data link connector? On this vehicle, it's got a direct connection, so I don't have to think any further about that. This is the extent to which I think about it. If it goes through another module first, then I keep that in my head. There is a possibility that a different module might have an effect on its ability to communicate. You would expect there would be uh, other codes in some of the modules saying that, hey, it can't communicate with those modules as well. You would expect that, but not always. You know what? It's just the way it works. Sometimes it's not a perfect world. What you can also have, and this is the true on both cases, you could have a module that instead of being completely dead, it's just um, putting out garbage data and it's affecting the entire network, taking the whole network down or portions of the network. Usually under those circumstances, you would have uh, codes that, you know, some modules might say that, hey, they can't communicate with this module, but they would also have generic 
CAN bus codes. We don't see that, so for now, we can pretend that doesn't exist, or we can forget about that scenario. Because all of the modules just have codes pertaining to, hey, we can't talk to this one module, so we can focus in on that. That's why I wanted to talk about with the, the bus versus the daisy chain, and yes, there's others, there's stars, there's rings, blah, blah, blah. But basically all it means is, does each module have a direct connection to that data link connector in every other module, or does it have to pass through others? And that's the extent that I think about it. Um, and even then, even if it has to pass through others, it's just something I keep in the back of the head because again, we only have one code saying everybody can't communicate with this one module, but, if it passes through other people, I'll keep that in the back of my head. In this case, it doesn't, it goes directly to the data link connector. So boom, we can go directly to that module and deal purely with that and then only think about things later if we have to. Okay guys, there's one last thing I wanted to quickly mention about this network. The diagram that I have here, it is heavily edited and it's really concise down to try and make the picture much easier and clearer to kind of talk about show what exactly I was getting at. The actual diagram if you were to go on all data pro demand would look like this. It's very messy, very noisy, it's got a lot of extra information on there, really easy to get distracted and kind of lose focus. So in cases like this what I'll do is I'll go directly after the module that we're concerned with. In this case is the ABS module that's down here and on this one here we see that there are two networks coming out of there it has a, a regular high-speed can it also has another one here the high-speed can yaw uh, on this green orange blue with white if we follow that up it goes directly to our restraint control module that would be our airbag module so the yaw rate sensor is an accelerometer sensor that is inside the airbag module now why would the ABS module have a direct connection or a separate dedicated network for that? Well, this way, the airbag module can send that information to the ABS module at a quicker refresh rate, a quicker update speed, because it doesn't have to contend with the messages on the rest of the network. It has its own network. So the ABS module since it has its own connection to the high-speed CAN network as well, we don't have to concern ourselves with that. If the ABS module did not have these wires down here, then the restraint control module would be responsible for passing the regular messages along. Um, so because we have no comm, if that were the case, we would potentially have to concern ourselves with the airbag module. But on this one here, the ABS module has its own connection to the high-speed CAN, therefore the airbag module is not responsible for passing its messages along. So we can ignore this network for now and focus solely on the regular high-speed CAN and we can follow that back and see where that leads us to. Now if we zoom out again and we look at this whole thing, we see that there's this whole other network here the violet orange, gray orange, and if we follow that up to say the body control module, we see that's an MS CAN for medium speed CAN. Now our ABS module, which is the one that we care about, does not have that network, so we can ignore that completely. Makes it much easier to look at, less junk in the way. On these diagrams, they also have a lot of other information, you know, all these um, splices, uh, descriptions, all that sort of stuff. You know what? That gets in the way. Let's get rid of that too. Easier. Hey, look at that. It's starting to look a lot like a bus network now. Now, there is a bit of a loop here which can be make it a little more difficult to follow. So what I do on diagrams like this, particularly more complicated diagrams, as you say you're looking at a, an issue with a, a 5 volt reference um, you know, you got something where the 5 volt reference isn't working and you're concerned that maybe one of the sensors on it is taking out the 5 volt reference. Well, a lot of vehicles have like 10, 12 sensors on that circuit and, you know, the engine performance diagrams, they can be like seven pages long. So what I'll do, and I'll do it for these ones too sometimes, 
is I'll print them out and I have a package of multicolored pens. You know, you can use pencil crayons, you can use whatever, but you know what? I highly recommend getting a package of something that's multicolored. They don't have to be the exact same colors, but print it out and just trace it. Follow every path of the wires that you're concerned with and follow it along till its end. You know what? Come over here. Okay, it doesn't go there. Follow it back. Okay, we're going down. We're coming around. Okay, we'll go up and we'll come over. Okay, here, here's a path to number two. For the first page and the white wire the other the other uh, line to our network it follows the same path so if we come out here it comes around comes up up here and over here and follows over to one so because this one has this loop here you know if you follow the wrong way you'd kind of end up at the wrong spot but if you were had it printed out and you were following every path you would eventually no matter what, you'd find your way to this one and two. And you follow these over, and sure enough, they go over to the data link connector. So that means following this back, come here, goes down, down here, comes all the way around again, back down again, and over, boom, ABS module. So that means the ABS module does have a direct path to the data link connector. So it is a bus network. None of these other modules are gateway modules. We don't have to worry about them for now. We can pretend that this data link connector is, that there's nothing else in the module or on the network. It's really just the data link connector and the ABS, um, if that makes sense. So going back to the original diagram, looks like this. Ignoring everything else that doesn't give us any kind of information that we're concerned about, we are back to this, so that means this diagram really is the same as this. It is just a bus. We don't have to concern ourselves with any of the other modules at this point. So we can go to our ABS module. We can disconnect the connector, start checking powers, grounds, um, the wake up signal as well. And then if all that's good, we'll start looking at the networks, making sure that uh, you know it's not a broken network before there and you know what while we're there we'll probably look at this network too anyways but it's pretty unlikely that this separate network would directly affect the regular high-speed CAN so without further ado let's go to that connector and see what we see okay so I unplugged our connector at the ABS module um, also took the air box off to make it a little easier to get to and definitely people have been here trying to trying to fix the problem I think I noticed the oh my light is falling probably because this is the this is the bad light oh I need to get some new lights come on um how's that yeah the little tab up here the release tab is, is broken and there's an awful lot of dielectric goop uh, <laughs> that's always a Hail Mary you know what it it doesn't work I've never once encountered a problem an electrical problem that was solved by taking a connector off and just gooping the crap out of it with dielectric uh, wishful thinking but anyways so really hard to see especially with all this dielectric but this guy right up here I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. That's pin 1. This is pin 13. And I did grab uh, a nice big picture for us. And it's kind of laid out like that. So I got the wiring diagram for our ABS module. So we can go down the way and we'll start checking the powers and the grounds. And then after that we'll also have to check the, uh, the networks. Make sure that's good. Um, I totally suspect this is just a bad ABS module, but we have to do our due diligence. Some of these can be pricey. So let me just go back in there and quickly turn the key back on. Probably gonna be dinging away at us because we got it, um, well, you won't even know we have it unplugged. Is that, there we go. That's, uh, that's the final click. Okay, so we got, our test light also set up. We got our power probe connection here. 
Um, I love these guys here. I hardly ever use the Power Probe, but I'll use these. Um, I got a bunch of them. You know what? The thing I like about them is they got uh, their banana plugs. All my um, equipment is banana plugs. And you know, you hook it up to the, the battery, so positive and negative. And then all of a sudden you have a good uh, power and a ground, a nice clean uh, source for you to do your testing with. It's not like using a, a test light where you're scraping the, the underside of a vehicle hoping, to, hoping that you're on a good ground, but you're really not. It takes the guesswork out of these guys. So we'll start by looking for powers. Why not? So I'll put this into a ground. Oh yeah, then the other thing too that I'll do is, um, so you test your equipment. Okay, our connections are good, but what if you hook it up backwards? So then what I'll do is, ow, oh, poke myself. Maybe I'll put the pokey bit down. Why not? Oh, I do that all the time. I was really bad at one of my other shops when I had uh, uniforms with a, a breast pocket. <laughs> I'd be stupid enough to put these things in the breast pocket. And, oh, God. You'd think I would learn. Um, so, is that a ground? No, probably not. Uh, where's something metal? Maybe down here. All right. So. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, it's been one of those days. So, by hooking our equipment up to the positive and then me touching a ground with this, I verified that not only are our connections good, but they're in the proper order. I didn't hook it up backwards there. So, let me <laughs> grab my light again. Um, do I have... Do I have another light? Maybe I'll grab the other light. I decided I don't like that light. There we go. How's that light? Maybe that'll work a little bit better. Maybe it'll stay. All right, that looks okay. So we'll go back to looking for powers. We'll start off with checking powers. Plug that back in there. And so if we look right here, usually what I'll do for this sort of stuff is I just follow the, the top, the fuses. So our big fuse, goes into motor B, uh, so that's pin one. Now, I would suspect this would just take out the motor and not provide a no-com, but you know what? We'll check them all. If we can. Oh, come on. Doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, so let's try that. Hopefully I got it the other hand. Hopefully you guys can see. So we're looking for that first power. Okay, we got the power. And then we will be looking for our next power, um, which is pin 25, which is also at the other top. Okay, that's there. Then our turn on signal that, um, 5 amp fuse, that goes all the way down to 35. Now this, of course, is one of the ones that you want to be really careful about. But if you look at everything else around there, it's just kind of your sensors and then a control for the vacuum pump. So even if we accidentally hit something wrong, we wouldn't be doing anything bad. But we don't want to hit anything wrong because we want to do our testing. So pin 35, going back to our picture, uh, 38 is the bottom, so we'll go, um, thir so this will be 38, this will be 37, 36, 35. Okay, so our wake-up signal is good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch uh, my test light over to positive. We're going to start looking for grounds, and there's just the two grounds, and Ford actually put a little bit of thought into this. Powers were at the top, grounds are at the bottom. Okay, ground, ground. Okay, so all our powers and 
I'm just gonna grab you for a second. Okay, so we checked all that. Uh, we had our two powers up top. Our wake up signal is 35. So going back to here, I can do that in a way that's not gonna, no, I probably can't. Oh yeah, how's that? So, um, okay, so how's that? So we got our one power here, which goes to one. That's right there, we had that. Um, our next power comes all the way down to 25 and that one's right there we had power there then our wake up signal comes all the way down to pin 35 i don't know if that's focusing but so then we got 38 37 36 35 and that lit as well then our grounds right here we got the one going to 38 and then the one here going to 13 and we got 13 and 38 and those lit. So now what we have is we have our CAN networks. Well, on here there's two CAN networks. We have our high speed CAN plus on 26, and then the high speed CAN low is on 14. So also they put some effort into this. So we got 14 and 26. And then if we follow this over to this guy, the our ABS module gets um, the yaw sensor reading from the restraint control module on a different uh, CAN network, a dedicated CAN from the restraint control module to the ABS. Now, I highly doubt that if that were the problem, I highly doubt that that would cause our ABS module to be no comp. It just wouldn't know what the yaw sensor would be. But if we're there, we'll look at those two. So if we follow those over, we got pin 24 for the yaw and then pin 37. And if we look at this, this is also convenient. So our yaws uh, are right here, 24 and 37, and our high speed network that we really care about are 14 and 26. So let me hook up to those. I'll pull out the picoscope and we'll get all our channels set up. And then I got the oh, wrong door. The front probers. We'll find some nice front probers to get in there, and we will look to see what our CAN network looks like, um, because that's about the only thing left. Uh, as long as we have a CAN network there, then you know what? We just have a bad control module. So let me set that up, and we'll see what we see. Okay, guys. So we got our test leads in there. Uh, we got the first two channels on our high-speed network. Uh, those be our blue and red traces. That's the one that we're going to be paying particular attention to. Um, I also threw in a couple of traces on the other CAN network, the one that goes to the airbag module that provides the, the yaw rate sensor. I don't think that could cause the ABS module to become a no com, but you know what? We're there. We'll hook it up. Uh, I got the uh, all, all my leads. Um, Reference to ground off of my power probe extension that I always use nice and handy kind of saves me from going all the way over there And of course uh, Anytime I'm doing something like a, a network uh, Measurement I turn off the charger it can introduce a whole bunch of noise and uh, Speaking of noise. I don't know why but um, Yeah, my lab scope now is uh, Not making the cleanest signals anymore. I'm gonna have to contact support about that hopefully I don't have to send it in hopefully it's something I'm just uh, missing out on but as you can see there's a lot of AC crap in there but we'll try and work with that uh, so we'll hit pause and oh you know what uh, run a where is where uh, Oh, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> let's get that freaking trigger in a good spot. Come on. I can't even see. 
Well, we'll pause that for a second. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like garbage, but we can at least see it. Um, we can kind of work around that for now. So the green and the yellow is our network for, uh, let's see if we can't move these down a little bit. The green and the yellow is our network for um, the yaw sensor and you know what that looks like a CAN network uh, if we put them down like that 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 looks like a let's see we are yeah two and a half three and a half uh, two and a half to one and a half so that looks like a CAN network so we're good with that um, we can get that up out of the way and then our high speed network god I hate it I hate that it's doing this um, well, yeah three and a half two and a half bring some cursors down there so yeah three and a half two and a half and then one and a half so we have a CAN network. So it's sure looking like an ABS module is faulty. Um, is there anything else we can do uh, just to kind of be absolutely sure? Well, we don't really, I, I didn't see any other modules that were having issues, but what if on, if we go back here with our information bus uh, wiring diagram, uh, I think it's asking an awful lot. Now this is the stuff for the infotainment, so we don't care about that for right now. So we got ABS is right here. Um, you know, it's it's a bus network, really. Um, so I can't see really. But you know, if you if you have a, a break somewhere else, what if? Um, Okay, so hear me out. What if we have a break and there's other modules on the network that are on the break attached to the ABS module, they could be putting out um, CAN network signals. Obviously our ABS module is not putting out any signals because it's unplugged. But what if we weren't paying attention? What if we missed something that's also an issue and it's on, uh, you know, say we have a break for both those wires, that's asking a lot, right? But, so, one of the things that we can do, we know that the engine computer works. Where are we? We can communicate with that. Uh, powertrain control module. So we know at least the main part of the network's good. So what we can do is we can just grab the handy dandy breakout box. I can plug this in and then I can move my other two channels, the yellow and the green. Uh, to our can high and our can low on here and then what we'll have is we'll have two different uh, measure points we'll have the measure point for right here at the ABS module as well as at the DLC and if they both look identical then hey you absolutely know 100% you got a bad ABS module so we're here it doesn't take very long to do that let me set that up and we'll see what we see Okay, so this is what it, we look like. We got our bulb plugged into the DLC and then our dongle for our Autel scan tool piggybacked off of that. We got the green and the can high, or sorry, green and can low, yellow and can high. And we put both of our, um, our negatives into the signal ground. So let us see what we see if they look any different. Keep in mind, we also have our original traces still in the can high there. And we can plug this back in. I was trying to do a bunch of stuff to see if I could get some of that noise to settle down. I don't really know why it's doing that, but I'll have to deal with that later. <laughs> All right, so we got, huh, well, 
Hmm. Well, that looks cleaner. Huh. Okay, so an A. It's three. Okay, so let's pause that. Yeah, huh. Weird. Looks better. Um, I'll take it. So I'll try and match those up. And then the yellow can go right there. Well, there you have it. That's pretty well an identical match. That's at the ABS module for the uh, blue and red and yellow and green are at the DLC. So um, yeah, <laughs> we just got a bad, uh, bad ABS module. Now, well, if I can get under here, and we'll grab that light. Now, if we go back to that, um, sometimes on these you can get away with uh, just changing the the brain box itself, the the control module side of it, without having to actually get in there and changing the um, the hydraulics, which would be nice because sometimes bleeding these things is unpleasant. Uh, not to mention if you have an older one, sometimes those lines don't like uh, coming off. But this one here, I'm sure they would come off. It just I'd rather not have to bleed it if I don't have to. So I'll look into that. Um, you know, sometimes on some of these vehicles, when the uh, the control module goes faulty, I just get a used one. Uh, get it? They usually come from the wrecker as the whole uh, unit, including the hydraulic unit and including the um, the pump motor. And I'll just take off the uh, the control module, and I will plug this one in, and away she goes. And also, while we're there, if we go back to our scan tool. Uh, if we hit escape, we hit escape, we hit escape. Hey, programming. Sometimes it takes a while. I think um, Ford a lot of times lets you change modules. It'll kind of save a copy of what's in the. Oh, well, that ain't going to do us any good. <laughs> Way to be a dummy. Uh, anyways, what I was saying is what you can do, well, Ford's generally pretty good with this. Um, you can, if you're replacing a module, you can download everything off the old module, install the new module, and upload it to that. That way you don't have to flash it. But, uh, of course, we're a no-com, so yeah, we're not going to be able to download anything. So, just a matter of replacing that module. Hopefully we can do just the control module, and then after that it'll have to be programmed. And then this thing will be good. No more brake lights on the dash anyways uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this one um i know i had an okay time on it uh yeah well i had more than an okay time a little depressed initially about the uh the scope having all that noise in there but it seems to be okay so yeah what can you do just another day well this truck really had me scratching my head trying to figure out what exactly to do with it um when i started looking at the truck I didn't think I'd have time to make a video on it. Midway through, uh, it sure looked like, hey, just a simple cut and dry. It's probably going to be a bad module, but at least on this one here, the connector's right there. The module's right there. So make a nice one to make a quick video on. Here's what you check. Uh, powers, grounds, communication wires. Here's what you do before that, blah, blah, blah. So I start filming kind of where I was at without the connector. Kind of go through that, do all those checks. Sure enough, Everything's good, so we've got a bad module. Sure as heck wouldn't be the first ABS module that I've replaced. Um, so then at that point, I go through and plug it back in, go to sit inside, you know, turn the key on to kind of show the lights that are on, show the no com, all that sort of stuff. But <laughs> wouldn't you know it, we don't have lights on anymore. And I communicate with the ABS module. What the hell? That sucks. Spend a bunch of time trying to make a video. 
And uh, I think it turned out. I think, you know, there's good information in there. So then I was kind of debating, what do we do? Do we just kind of pretend that it's still acting up, uh, you know, just release it as is? Um, or do you know, kind of sit and wait, um, spend a couple months waiting to see if it comes back and then do the completion? Because you know, hey, I plugged it back in. Maybe it's kind of woken up now, but you know, if it fails and it wakes up, usually it's still a problem module, right? So I was gonna see if it comes back. Well, it's been two months and we haven't heard from the guy. That's not to say that it hasn't had a problem. It's a work truck for this guy, he's busy. So you know what, it could have come back and maybe we don't know about it yet. Um, so we'll just kind of have to go with it, um, see what it is, but you know what, um, kind of my conscience kind of got me and you know I wanted to be truthful that yes, plugged it in, everything worked. So now what? Here's another flip side, what do you do? Obviously if it's your vehicle, that's an easy decision, you just drive it, see what happens. What if it's a customer's vehicle? What if they're really, really busy? Downtime is really, really important. They can't bring it to a shop very much. Here's their shop time. They want it fixed. They want it resolved. Can you do anything? Well, not too, too much. I do have this handy kit from AES Wave. Uh, I like to separate. I, I cut the two halves of this because I find the rest of it takes up too much space. And all these terminals I just leave in like this. Now what you can do is you can find the proper size terminal uh, of each pin and then you pull the connector off and you can use these to do a pin drag test. You want to feel a little bit of resistance, it shouldn't just fall right out. And then you can kind of get an idea of if one of the, the terminals are spread, if you've got a bad connection there. However, the, the problem with that theory is the way that this is situated in the vehicle, that harness doesn't really move very much. So if you had uh, a bad connector, bad terminal, it's not really gonna come and go. So what else can you do? Well, you can grab when it's plugged in, vehicle's running, you got your scan tool, you're looking at your live data connected to the module, and you just grab the harness, kind of shake it, pull on the connector, smack the, the module, all that stuff. I did that, and you know what? It didn't know calm. So, uh, what what was the issue? Don't know. Seems to be working right now. Um, could it be that that's all it needed? Maybe it wasn't plugged in fully all the way. I don't see how. Uh, I would have to suspect that uh, it was an internal solid state issue on the board inside that module. I'd have to suspect it's going to act up again. Um, I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if we're going to see it again. Um, <laughs> just kind of one of those things that happens in the real world. The, the fun and the joys of trying to make videos of these and try to make them in nice, compact uh, objects, if you will. It's the real world. Sometimes it doesn't always go the way you think it might. Um, anyways, hopefully that's not too disappointing, but you know what, hey, that's the way she goes. Um, I still think there's good information in this video, so I'm still going to release it. Um, still trying to package it up as good as I can. Uh, so, just want to say thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps out, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot.